Okay, it's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. Today we've got a bottle of Founders KBS, Kentucky Breakfast Stout. Chris, you are a magician. Where on earth did you find this in the UK? Well, we checked our normal spout, couldn't find it. I happened to pop into the bottle shop in Penarth, uh, owned by Dan, isn't it? Yep. And uh, he had some there, first come, first served. So I got myself served. I'm not sure I was on my way to a business trip. I had to have them put it away from me on the side after I paid for it and say, just keep it there. I want to keep it in good condition. Yeah. Don't want to leave it in my car at a train station. You know, that would be a bad thing. So, uh, you know, kudos to them. It was still there Saturday morning when I got there. And uh, we've got some there to look at. It's an 11... 70 IBU, 11.2%. ABV, uh, probably a Imperial Port or Imperial Russian Stout. Uh, a flavoured stout, they call it. Mm. So, uh, Bottle opener, let's get this baby open. Yep. So, people queue around the block for this stuff. This is a yeah, quite a rare event. 16 cases, was it, to the UK? Only 16 cases to the UK, and we must have had about two cases in Wales. So, mm. uh, very, very kind of happy with that. Yeah, and if you're anywhere near Penarth, do pop in and see them. I'm sure, they'd be glad to sell it to you. Oh, my goodness me, look at the way this beer's pouring. All right, that's yours, my friend. My goodness. kind of it goes to the ladies afterwards anyway so yep we, we are live on periscope at the same time uh it's a one finger tank on its head what do you think of the glug of the poor chris that big fat glug it, it sounded like it was almost like chunking out rather than yeah anything else so yeah you're fabulous looks nice lovely lacing on the glass it's as you'd expect as well it's yeah not retain a big head it's 11 half percent you know jack black beer yeah yeah, nothing but your reflection in it when you look at it. Fantastic. Let's get the aroma. Mm. Wow. It smells a little bit of kind of bourbon. You've got that, it's like a really intense, sweet, massive milk stout. Yeah. With that yeah. bourbon edge. It's almost like you've had a, a milk and bourbon cocktail shoved at your nose. It, it's like you're smelling density rather than yeah, some of the, the, the chocolate, the it's coffee in there. And... Fantastic. Biscuits, chocolate, coffee, caramel. Let's dive in. Should we dive in? A little right. tiny kick of alcohol on yeah. the nose, but it's 11.2%. You're going to expect that. You can't hide that. Smell a slight burn on it, but yeah. Yeah, let's go for it. Cheers. Mm. Oh, vanilla. Massive punch of vanilla. It's like being punched up the chuff with a vanilla yeah. glove. Oh, blimey. But also a huge boom of biscuit. The first mouth, the first thing you get as it goes down your throat. It's like shoving, somebody's shoving nice biscuits. If you have UK viewers, you know what I mean by nice biscuits. Yeah. It's like they're shoving that down your front and vanilla up your ass and making it meet in the middle. It's amazing. Got some love there. Uh, we, we, again, we're live on Periscope. Uh, we got some love from Periscope. The, the love hearts coming through there. Mm. Um, hello, everyone down there. Um, but yeah, what a, an absolute wonderful beer. Oh. It's 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 phenomenal. And uh, yeah, as it works its way through your mouth, trying to get more of more of it, keeping it in there. It's like it's like you're chewing on a bar of chocolate. Mm. When they say a flavored stout. I, I understand what they mean by that. I, I think you get a you get a sense of confectionery. Mm. It's it's a lot of lovely whiskey, bourbon flavours from the oak. Mm. You get a kick of kind of a, a confectionery. Do you get that confectionery kind of almost Kit Katty, wafery, chocolatey? Yeah, it's more towards sort of galaxy than it is um, Cadbury. Yeah, in terms of the chocolate flavour. Yeah. But yeah, there's definitely hints that it's almost like you've, I don't know, maybe eaten a, uh, not quite a crunchy. I'll probably, it'll probably hit home in a second, which chocolate bar it is exactly. It's not a crunchy, it's not a dairy milk, it's somewhere in between those two. I don't know, what sits in between those? Something with vanilla in. Oh god, yeah. Lots of vanilla in there. Um, 
it's this is very drying uh, warming as well. a drying warming, drying. warming. It's, it's got that vinous quality in, mm. in that, that it kind of makes your mouth pucker up that way because it's actually quite a dry drink strangely you know as you know when you've got a fine wine in your hand you you, you know this is this is a fine beer then you? you know there's a lot of quality there's a lot of it's been crafted yeah. exquisitely well yeah you know. yeah what i'm getting are that even not drinking any for a few moments there you're still getting almost the fumes of chocolate pumping out of your back out of your stomach and back yeah. into your mouth and that, that actually cocoa bitterness yeah is, is, is one of the overriding things so you've got the vanilla up front you've got the biscuit shoved down your throat you've got the cocoa bitterness rolling round on your tongue and back through your mouth and you've got that that big hit of the alcohol like 11.2 percent you'd expect it and that's just kind of making you go yeah which is accentuating that that chocolatey massiveness it's wonderful it's a wonderful beer hazelnut maybe mm. hazelnut vanilla nuttiness you could talk about this beer I think for the next half an hour but um, I'm gonna move you on to a rating or did you have something quickly you wanted to mention before we rated it I am um, it that yeah the hazelnut thing does ring true it reminds me a tiny bit I think Solterra do a beer, yeah. um, which is the hazelnut coffee, coffee stout. Coffee porter. Is it uh, a porter, is it? Stout or a porter. It's a stout yeah, or a porter, yeah. one of the two. And that, yeah. I think that's a flavour of beer in the same mm. way. This this um, brings the same experience, but it, it kind of, instead of like, you know, just a, a gentle uh, off the edge of the uh, bat for a, a four, this is whacking it for a six. Yeah, you yeah. Know, for yeah. Um, our US viewers, I'd... I can't draw you an analogy, yeah. <laughs> but, but you, uh, if you understand cricket at all, you'll, you'll know what I mean by that. I love the whiskey, the warming. I, I, I love, I, I've still got that warming sensation in the, in the pit of my stomach. I think it, it's a lovely, good all-round beer. Mm. Um, what, what's it for? What's it, what, why would you serve this up? I mean, I've, we've only got one bottle left. What do I do? They say breakfast. Though. Could you, could you wake up in the morning? Make yourself a slice of toast and then crack up and open 11.2% ABV. Uh, I, I know it's just a name. Um, it's, about, it's apparently the ultimate hangover beer. It's the beer that you would drink to clear that hangover from the night before. But yeah, if, I'd be, if I'd anything, be worried about it starting again the next day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, for me, I think for me, this is a big finisher. So I, I went out with somebody the other night who was drinking craft beer for, for the first time, and what do we get to at the end of the night? I thought, you know, I, I tricked him through, not uh, taking him through a number of IPAs, and you know, fa fairly gentle in terms of what, the journey. And then suddenly at the end of the night, we ramped it up. We went straight for a massive black IPA, seven and a half percent. Yeah. And he was fine with it, and it was great. First time he drank a, a black beer, but yeah, for the more experienced drinker, this could be your big finisher. Yeah, absolutely. This, this is instead of having a, 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 you know, a nice big slug of whiskey at the end of the night, this is the one that's going to send you home with a warm feeling in your belly. Lovely. Rating. Go for it, Chris. <clears throat> I'm going to give it... And because, because it feels slightly artificially flavoured, mm. I'm going to... Little, little drop on the mark there. You might have been expecting a 10. It is wonderful. I'm really pleased you're saying this. But I'm going to notch it down to a nine yeah it's a fabulous experience yeah, yeah. it's brilliantly put together but i just feel that mm. it could have been yeah it could have been made you've i've had beers that are closer to this experience that aren't artificially yeah. flavored the lurvig conrag stout comes to mind we but, did in february that was just unbelievable yeah. and, I'm and, not, and durham's um uh, uh oh, what's it called uh, the the imperial stout they do yeah. it, it would i think we gave that a 10 yeah because it was just absolutely fantastic. Uh, then, then I suppose quickly we should, if we're giving it a nine, then we, we should quickly touch on: is this beer just being caught up in the hype? And I'm going to be, I'm going to be damn honest and say, yeah, yeah. I think it has. But I think you, it has. You can artificially create hype. You know, you can, you could buy a blood. You know, you can only send out. 500 Buzz Lightyear toys at Christmas yes. and every, all of a sudden everybody's jumping up and down you know yeah. well yeah you can artificially create demand they've sent they've sent over some cases of this to the UK yeah everyone's dancing around like their dicks on fire trying to get hold of it yeah you know, well yeah I'm glad I've got hold of it I'm glad I've tried it 
Right. We have the panini card mentality where you want to get every single one. This man's a god. I want Trevor this, Francis. This, this man is yeah, a god. From 1986 and without the curly perm haircut, yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, Chris, I, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. Again, we generally kind of... We agree on most things. I, again, you've got this absolutely nailed. I think it's a 9 out of 10. It's a very, very good beer, but the little bit of artificial chocolate, hazelnutty flavour thing going on, I'm not quite sure about it. So I'm going to give it a 9 also. Um, but thanks for joining us. Thanks, Periscope people. Yeah, we're, we're going to stay. We've still got some love ads. We're going to stay going live because we've got the Beaver Town beer down here to carry on with. So we'll leave Periscope running. But yeah, uh, 9 out of 10 from both of us. A very good beer, but not quite a 10. No, not quite a 10. But no dry finders. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for watching. Check him out, Real Ale in 140. Cheers.